You ever have the annoying experience of trying to play a solo on a Fender Stratocaster, but the high E string seems to be too close to the edge of the fretboard, so it keeps slipping off. Well, some strats are just made like that. So what's the solution? Well, keep watching and you'll soon find out. You are now watching Guitar Quackery, where pseudoscience, witchcraft, and quackery are the gold standards for guitar maintenance and repairs and modifications, as we're about to see. There's an old Chinese proverb. Well, you know what? I'll save that for later. Let's just hop over to the shop. The solution is very simple. You just bring the guitar to guitar quackery and we'll throw it on the bench and here it is and the problem will go away. So first we want to look at this string. It's really really close to the edge of the fretboard. Uh, if you look at the string you can see that uh, it just slips off when you play. Yeah. Now let's take a measurement of uh, the string spread. So from high E to low E uh, yeah, let's see. There you have it. I'll show you what it is. Two and three sixteenths of an inch. That's the measurement and that's the problem. What is the solution? The solution comes in a box like this. Okay. I'm going to open the box and show it to you. You ready? Well, it's another bridge. Now, if we take uh, this measurement, 2 and 3 sixteenths, and we place the caliper uh, on the first string here, you can see that the other side falls outside of the saddle. So we need to uh, narrow it a little bit and the measurement on this one is okay let me get it there right on the number two and one sixteenths from e to e so this bridge is narrower than this one now why did they install a wider bridge on a guitar like this i don't know don't ask me um, the procedure is very simple. We remove the strings. We remove the springs from the back. Uh, there are some springs attached to the trim block on the back of the guitar. Then we unscrew the six screws and the bridge comes out. Then we install a new bridge and perform a full setup. This guitar is also here for some other services. So this is just an additional service that I'm doing for this customer because this guitar obviously has this issue. Believe it or not, this is actually a very common issue on some Fender guitars. So this video will hopefully help out some people. And if you feel that it's helping you in any way, just feel free to click that like button. And if you feel that it might help out somebody else, feel free to click that share button. Okay, so in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how I checked the alignments using the new bridge before completing the work. I installed a new bridge temporarily, just one spring, and I put a red thread so that uh, I can show you how the situation improved. Uh, right here you can see that uh, the string, uh, meaning the high E string, is uh, uh, slightly away from the fretboard the way it should be, right? So this is how I threaded it. You can see it clearly. Yeah. I'm just holding it this way. Right. I didn't put the strings on because um, I am about to do a level crown and polish on this guitar and that's uh, because it's got some fret wear 
and it's got some uneven frets so uh, that's the job we're gonna do on this guitar I won't show you the level crown and polish not in its entirety because that's not what this video is about maybe I'll show you part of it we can do it if there's time now uh, speaking of time there's an old Chinese proverb that says time is money and speaking of money there's an old Chinese proverb that says money doesn't grow on trees so where does it come from well it depends on this channel it comes from various sources and you can feel free to explore some of those sources in the links below now I personally use money to buy uh, things such as food just nourishment uh, just so that I personally don't need to get involved with farming and agriculture I'd rather just uh, give some money to someone else in exchange for food and now since I don't get involved with farming that frees up a lot of my time again time uh, to do other things such as uh, I don't know like make YouTube videos uh, like this one that you are watching obviously right now uh, yeah do you see what I'm getting at? So, if you like th this kind of work on YouTube, and if you would like to support this channel, it's easy. You can just click some of the links. Uh, you can click the like button. You can click uh, the share button. This way, more people come to watch these videos, and I can make some more. Uh, there's a, a super thanks button also okay and then there's a, a link to the patreon page and there's also a link to the merch shop in fact you can just scroll the merch banners where you can buy stuff like coffee mugs oh speaking of coffee uh, there's a link that says buy me a coffee hmm? To keep me up at night editing these videos again for you to watch uh, okay enough of that um, so why don't we get back to the shop because we got some frets to level I keep uh, checking the fretboard and keep uh, dusting it off um, yeah I still got a little bit of work to do before I can start crowning. The procedure is called level, crown and polish. So you just saw me level the frets and now you're going to see me crown the frets with a crowning file. I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just get a plaque machine? Well, speaking of thinking, plaque machines don't think. I do. I actually think about every fret as I'm crowning it and uh, I've seen some uh, work come out of black machines that you know is not quite as good as uh, they want you to think and now a word from our sponsor the plaque company making fantastic guitars even fantasticer well, I think that's the slogan, something along those lines. Uh, speaking of plaque machines, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, in the hands of a skilled operator, the plaque machine always delivers great results. Oh, so it's about the operator. Hmm. Don't assume that plaque machines do a better job because uh, they don't and we're going to talk about that in another episode of guitar quackery by the way 
A plaque machine is just a tool. So it depends who's using it, right? And how they're using it and how they're maintaining it. So that's my opinion based on some observations, which I'll show you in another episode of Guitar Quackery. Every Gibson guitar goes through a plaque machine at the Gibson factory. So uh, if you ever buy a new Gibson, don't get it plaqued. It's already been plaqued at the factory. You see, one thing that a plaque machine doesn't do is, is this, watch. This. So uh, this gets all the particles out from within the grooves of the file. A plaque machine doesn't do that, uh, not to my knowledge. By the way, a plaque machine doesn't really do a level crown and polish the way we do it on the workbench or on the neck check. Um, a plaque machine has a rotating wheel with a groove that's actually like a, a crowning file. So it does the leveling and crowning in one pass. Then the polishing is done by hand on the bench. So here's the thing. Um, I do a better job than a, a plaque machine. Now, I know that the people that are selling plaque machine services are going to tell you the opposite. Uh, but here's the thing. A plaque machine doesn't think yet. Right? AI is coming, I know. But uh, even AI is not really artificial intelligence, right? It's a misnomer. Um, but I'll do a separate episode uh, for black machines. And we'll talk about that in a separate episode of Guitar Quackery. Okay, enough about this black machine business. Let's get back to the guitar. Uh, you might have noticed that I removed the pick guard uh, when I put the guitar on the neck jig to do the level crown and polish. Well, I always remove the pick guard from a strat when I do a level crown and polish. Except, of course, when I forget to do it. So, uh, since the pick guard is off, why don't I show you under the pick guard? We'll have a look at the electronics. So I sprayed uh, the all the electronic components with deoxid. I see this has been rewired. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is not even connected. Uh, here we have uh, electrical connections, like uh, you know. Um, handyman work and well, this is from the pickup uh, this is, uh, could be okay but we do have a exposed wire here which can short out uh, so I, I do need to do a, a little basic repair work here uh, before I put it together I, I'm not gonna show you how I uh, fix the electronics uh, I it just did a very uh, basic repair on it. Um, but I will show you a little bit of how I filed uh, the knot. Right now I got a set of uh, sacrificial strings on the guitar so that I can uh, file the string slots uh, on the knot. I'm not going to uh, show the entire procedure uh, in this video. Uh, but as you can see, you know, these uh, String slots are too high, especially after leveling frets. Uh, so I am just uh, going to file them down one by one uh, the way it's done, right? So here we go. Uh, we can see um, the E string slot. Um, This is how I do it. I am uh, barely uh, pressing down on uh, the file. Uh, 
Right now I'm just using the tap method. I have uh, different procedures that I use. Um, I'm just gonna do the whole thing off camera. Uh, there will be other videos on how to file the string slots. This video is about this bad boy. And it only takes six screws and three springs to install it. Uh, then you just gotta put the strings on and do a setup, which I'm not going to show you because it's just a standard setup on a Strat and I can just make a separate video about that, about any Strat. Uh, but I do want to show you the end result. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, as you can see, I have a, a very slight break angle across the knot on this string. Uh, that's because I'm using a different wrap than uh, what I had uh, when I was using the uh, sacrificial strings. Same thing here. Um, yeah, fret work is done. New bridge has been installed. I used thread locker on these little height adjustment screws. Now with the new bridge, we do have a decent space between the string and the edge. And I'm just finishing up. I need to put the plate on and that's about it. And now it's time for some bonus material just for you. I put the old bridge back just to show you some bonus material. Uh, if you pay close attention, you might notice that the distance between these two strings is uh, smaller than the distance between these two strings. Uh, I can show you this with uh, the caliper. So if I place um, the jaws of the caliper between these two strings and just transfer over here, you will see that, uh, well, there's, there's quite a difference. And uh, the reason is, is, is this. There's a gap here, which we don't see elsewhere. And that's because this screw hole is a little bit further away apart from, from this screw hole than the other ones. I've seen this uh, issue on some fender bridges. Uh, clearly that's some kind of manufacturing defect. And that of course, uh, paired up with the fact that this is a two and three sixteenths inch uh, string spread, it really doesn't help uh, this issue here. But fortunately, uh, we do have uh, the replacement bridge, which does not have this issue. Uh, it's almost 3.30 a.m. Uh, for me, and I'm still recording and editing videos for you, yeah. So, you know what to do, right? So, do it now. Don't procrastinate. And there will be more, which I'm already working on. I mean, not now, but these days, yeah, it's coming. <laughs>